I think I've been spending too much time alone here at the JL Ranch. Now I got a supervisor. Folks, Lester here. Morning, folks. Lester here. Folks, Lester here. Hey, folks. Lester and Jamie here. Good morning, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hold on. Oh, is my face as dirty as yours? Is my face as dirty as yours now? Yeah, you got a dirty. Morning, folks. Lester here today. Are you excited? I'm nervous. So look who has shown up to help me today. He didn't know he's helping me. He thinks he's just come to look at the place. He and Wendy, his wife, have come by. And I'm like, oh, he doesn't even know what's about to happen. He doesn't even know what is about to happen. Looky here in the back of my truck. That would be 100 T-posts. 100 T-posts that have to be set in the ground. Come on, girls. Come on, let's go. Come on. All right, so. <laughs> Is that something else? How much noise comes out of the little bodies? Y'all ever looked at a man and noticed that it looked as though his right arm was better defined than his left? A lot more definition, a lot more strength. Just better looking arm. You ever wonder why? You ever wondered why? Let me show you. I'm gonna show you, I, I ain't even scared. I'm just gonna show you, I'm about sick and tired. And at this point, I'm just gonna show you. Choke is on. That's why the right arm. Now you now you don't have to no longer question it. Now you know. Now you just know. No, they people should know. Like people should know why the right <sighs> arm is always the it's the strong arm, Jamie. This is the strong <laughs> arm. And this other left arm, it just kind of like dangles. It just dangles. And your right arm is nice and strong. It's because you spend so much time trying to crank up machinery. Things that are built for right-handed people end up making your right arm a lot stronger and more defined than your left arm. I'm just saying. I'm just calling it out the way it is. <laughs> hey, folks, Lester and Jamie here, and we are very blessed to be joining you. It's been a busy day, Jamie. Tell them, tell them all that we've done today. Tell them the, the round trips we've made. Me, me. We, we have uh, accomplished chores and work at three places the last two days. All three all in the same day and we lived to tell the story we have lived to tell the story but uh you know jamie and i both agreed on one thing um about all of the work it's funny how you see these these daunting tasks ahead of you and you sit there and you question how will i ever get this done and then you start getting out there and doing a few things, be it with working with the horses or building some fence or whatever the job in front of you might be. And after a couple of days, yes, you do feel tired. You do feel the the, the wear and tear on your joints and, and everything else. But you also begin to feel a little bit like it's it's kind of like when you first start working out. And even though it hurts, it also is, feels good. And it feels good to see things coming along. And in saying how things are coming along, talk about Rita. Talk about Rita, that little filly over there who used to be that little wild and crazy girl. Y'all, today specifically, big things were accomplished that she would never let us do before, even when we were holding her. And today I was able to do some treatments on her in the pasture while she just stood there with no reaction, with no repercussions, where I didn't have to like corner her or she didn't get to corner me and it was just it was remarkable and you actually got stuck in the 
I'll call it the hallway with her. And that has been a nervous place for us from the beginning because she'll typically kick around to kick you out. Yeah. And she didn't do any of that today. And it has been like a remarkable, very quick transition of her just overall demeanor. And it has been, I don't know, like for me, that's like number one top of the accomplishments of the week has been Rita. Well, to be honest, you guys, a lot of you guys kept saying that, that she needs a mayor, a mayor, a mayor. Uh, um, let me just say this the, the right way. Uh, a disciplined mayor who's been trained and who's been worked with will put her in her place and can do more for her than any of us could do. And you were very right. The horse people out there who kept saying, get a mayor, get her a mayor were so very right because that mayor has taught Rita a lot. And so Jamie's also discovered that if you walk inside the pasture with, with Rita and, and uh, almost call her Starla and Stormy, Rita still wants to be number one. Rita demands that she's going to intercept any attention, food, anything. Rita's first. And Storm kind of looks over her shoulder and is like, whatever. Like, doesn't care that Rita demands that. But it, go ahead. No, it's, um, that, that what you just now said reminded me of when I used to teach school. Not the older kids, but especially the younger kids. When you line them up to go to lunch or to recess or to the water fountain restroom some kids just want to run up and be in the front they fight to be first place the cool kids are like god i don't care here get in front of me as a matter of fact the cool kids are like go ahead y'all and they prefer to be in the back and those little nerdy kids are up in the front i'm not calling rita a little nerdy kid but in a way, it is true. She's young and she's a little girl and she wants to run up there and be in the yeah. front and like, you know, like, yeah, 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 look at me. I'm first. And Stormy's like, okay, it's coming so to me anyway. So first. it doesn't matter. So yeah. I'm still getting fed. I'm still getting loved on. I'm still going to be brushed and everything's going to be taken. So go ahead, you know. And Rita just thinks she's all special up there. And at that point, once Rita gets what she thinks that she's won, She's done. She'll yeah. walk off and do whatever. And she's not following us around harassing us. No. Also, if Jamie will, let's just, for example, that Jamie has to do something with Stormy. If Jamie will show it to Rita, let yeah. Rita look at it, let her smell it and probably try to taste it. And once Rita knows what it is, okay. And Rita, then Jamie can go yeah. do what she needs to do. There's but, a lot of people asking about Stormy's eyes and they were better today. We still did another treatment, but Rita typically would run us out of the pasture or would be so interested in today. I just showed her the eye medicine. Like this isn't anything cool. And she was like, Oh, okay. Carry on. It's just very minute things that you wouldn't know unless you were intimately involved. But for us, those are, those little things are big things because we aren't doing them. That's, that's the thing is like, we're not, we're not enforcing that with Rita stormy is. Yeah. And, and that's like the most powerful piece of this all is that for all the time that Rita's been with us, yes, she had, she had started to, to make small changes and there were days that were good, but she still had some pretty rough times. But right now she's a different horse with Stormy and, um, and Stormy is just incredible, just incredible. Yep. She's pretty amazing. We don't want to talk a whole lot about Stormy because if we do, no one's going to watch my video tomorrow. I know how it goes, but uh, Stormy got her first ride from, from good old Lester and it was wonderful. And I'm not going to say anything else about it except for she's doing wonderful. And she's almost four years old. So we were told by all of the experts uh, that she's, uh oh, no, Trixie, talk, Jamie move she's gonna mess up everything Tricks, up stop baby back up i don't know what she wants from there she, well, she just wants to get over here and mess everything up she like needs attention sorry guys we have dogs around our feet we have cats behind <laughs> us and i i know from experience that when they all start congregating bad things are going to happen plugs lights can start falling microphones and it's just going to be yeah, I can already foresee bad things happening. So there are people that are like, Stormy's too young to ride. So you don't know this. Stormy has been riding for most of her life. Yeah. And there'll be a video that comes out a little bit about her history tomorrow with pictures from, from uh, the daughter of the previous owner and to be able to share some of her history to show you that while Lester is first with us, 
Lester's not. Oh, first. I'm not. I would never. I, yeah. I, I am. I, I am way too old and too fragile to ever get on a. What do they call it? A green. A green. Green broke. Green broke horse. Is it called green broke? One that's not really broke. And even getting on voodoo, the times when he's kind of been agitated and he's t tossed me around. A man my age falling off a horse takes a lot longer to recover than a 20 year old falling, falling or th being thrown off a horse. That is true. It takes a lot longer. As a matter of fact, just getting out of the tailgate of my truck can take a toll on me, y'all. Don't even talk about <laughs> tailgates because I'll, I'll bring it up. Just tell them it's fine because it was one of the funniest moments of this whole week. Seriously. We, we've been working over at the new property and uh, there's we don't have a place to sit. So one day I put my tailgate down and I plop my behind up there. I'm like, come over here and sit beside me. Guys, so you don't know the struggle of her. Because it's so tall. It's so tall. Okay, so, so the tailgate comes to like here okay <laughs> and when's the last time you tried to lift yourself up with nothing when your bottom half is bigger than your top to get to that height it was not pretty and lester had to grab me by my belt loops and i am she's so laying on her belly and like half in and half out her feet are like dangling and i had to grab her by her i give her probably the the worst wedgie she's ever had and i'm pulling her just so we could sit side by side in the back end of the truck oh, it was and awful. look around. It was horrible for both of us. <laughs> There's nothing to grab onto. So I'm like, like a yeah, flounder, we'll never do like that a again. fish out of water. We should probably a invest in a table and some chairs <laughs> to take out. So it was so that'll bad. never happen. Oh, again. No. It's one of those moments. I'm like, thank God this isn't a first date. Thank God he already loves me because I cannot imagine how horrible that I look right wow. now. Yeah. It was hilarious. So yeah, getting into the truck is easier than getting out for me and vice versa for Jamie. She can get down, no problem, but getting up was a five minute ordeal. No, I'm and not then exaggerating. I was determined. Like he's like, just forget it. I'm like, no. No, I was trying to say, stop, just stop, just stop. Because her pants were pulled up up to her top, her boobs, but the time I was that that wedgie was something. And I'm trying to pull with all my might, and she's just kicking and kicking and kicking. <laughs> Someone says camel toe. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Something like that. But there um, are things in places that just weren't supposed to be. And I got to giggling while it's happening. And he's trying to drag me up there. And my face is planted down on the tailgate. Like it was a spectacle. And I'm so thankful that no one got to see it. Today, fire, fire, Chris, fire chief, Chris, <laughs> and his wife, Wendy, came out to visit. And uh, we get to show them around a little bit. Sister Tina and Rob came out to visit for a little bit. And uh, no, everyone um, is just as enchanted with this property as we are. I don't know. Now, you guys who live in the Midwest, you have probably stood and seen an open 50 acres plenty of time where it's not as, as you know, weird to you all. But for us who have, you know, we have so many trees through here. And it's very rare where you can stand on your property and see the entirety see of it. And it looks so darn vast. And, um, of course, I walk the entirety of it, which is funny, checking all of my fences. But, no, it's we're just so very blessed, you guys, just so very blessed. And I don't know. It just seems quite surreal. I had this same feeling when we got Longhorn Lester's. And now to get, you know, this property over here, a few miles north of here, and it's just so beautiful with the hills and the ponds and the few trees that we have, the nice, big, shady, are they pecan trees? There are pecan there. Something else happened today that I could, sh I could share a little video. Oh, God. It's just actually funny. You talk for a couple of minutes. Give me a chance to find it, stick it on here. So something about this property is magical. And, I, and that's not like me just saying it because it's ours. There's, there's. Glasses. There's, it looks like just a big open field, but the more that we explore it and are there, the more that I keep finding. And today was one of those days and it, and if you watch my channel, you saw about the pecans, but you, but also like things around the barns, things around the ground, things, the trees themselves, the fences, the corners, the, the animals on the sides. Like I just, I keep finding more and more things that lead to so much intrigue that I just, I didn't expect. Um, you know, when you buy a pasture, 
and you're that's that's the intention of it you really think to yourself like okay it's a pasture we'll check all the fences we'll bring all the cows and it's a pasture there's there's no home to explore there's one old barn it doesn't there's not a lot of meat to it you know and all of a sudden when you get to she do it? walking around like you really start to like i don't i don't know fall like i've fallen in love does that make sense to you absolutely i i know all about falling in love with something that's uh is it called an innate it's yeah. something that's not alive but yeah. it is alive and uh, now of course i've been focused in falling in love with things along one stretch of fence <laughs> i have been focused on one stretch of fence in particular for the last several days and so that's where i have fallen in love i have fallen in love again with uh well there's new animals to fall in love with some really cute ones and stuff but no absolutely uh i've just you know, done a few things inside the barn that I've discovered that I've put on my page. But uh, let me show you what happened today if I can. Uh, I'm working and I hadn't heard from Jamie in the last hour or so. She had checked in at some point and said, Did I need any help? I'm like, Nope, I'm I'm fine. I'm good, I'm doing good. You know, you do what you're doing. And at some point, I'm on my side by side and I had driven up to the barn to get some tools. And as I loop around, what I saw was I thought a woman who was in distress, probably having a stroke or a heart attack. And if you watch the video and you'll see why. That little black dot right there <laughs> under that tree. Yeah, that little black dot in the in the shadow of that tree. Keep your eye on that black dot, okay? That's Jamie. I thought you, you had a stroke. <laughs> oh, Lord. Are they edibles? Yeah. <laughs> well, so she's sitting there picking pecans off the ground. And, you know uh, how hard it is to just walk and bend over and bend over? You basically become like an upside down U of the ground. So I just started crawling around and, you know. There are several people talking about pecan picking, and then there's a couple who are also saying those are toxic for, to your cows. No, they're not. Pecans are actually good for your cows, your horses, pigs, deer. Even dogs. Even dogs. Pecans are fine. Now, I think that what you probably get mistaken is if you try to feed, if, if a pecan tree falls over and cows eat the leaves. green leaves, dried leaves are fine. Mm -hmm. They're not going to eat them because they don't like them. But if a pecan tree was to fall over and your animals eat the green leaves of a pecan tree, those are, in fact, toxic. And enough of them could make your cows or your animals sickly. But pecans themselves have been actually used in a lot of feeds. They will grind them up. And, and the pecan the pe shells specifically are, yeah. are an excellent forage. Yeah. So let's not argue about this and that and stuff. Jamie's picking pecans and pecan <laughs> guys, there have been cows living on that property for the last 25 or 30 years. And you saw the ones that came off of there and they're as fat and healthy as we've ever seen any cows post drought. drought yeah. And so we are not concerned at all. So we're not even going to entertain the pecan theories. Of, oh my God, pecans, pecans. Let's not do that. Just be blessed that we have pecan trees, good shade trees. And Jamie's on the ground picking pecans, Lord. And she had piles of them. Now there were some problems with some of the pecans. Some of them, some of them were probably from last year or, or were still in the hole. Uh, so those are no good, but we're trying them out. It's, um, it surprised me because of how small they are for a giant tree. I'm used to a little bit bigger pecan, but this is a, just a native pecan. I don't think this is anything that was planted. So it's, there's no like hybrid form to it that made it big or paper shell or anything like that. It's just a native pecan tree. And I only made it to one tree today, but we have about 12 that I've counted so far. So I you do can something. bet 
I'm going to be crawling around on the floor or on the ground and getting to know a little bit more. And one of the coolest things, and I didn't put this in a video so I can say it here, um, as I'm out there and I'm brushing away the leaves to be able to see what pecans have fallen, there is deer, what do you say, how, deer scat, is that how you call it? Yeah. Deer scat. So we have seen white-tailed deer out there, but now I know that they pretty much hover around at least that pecan tree and are doing a lot of a lot of grazing right there. Jamie, there's a lot of folks who are laughing at us for the I know. way there's we're two pronouncing ways. pecans. There's two ways. So I'm going to just find you. I'm just curious how Google says pecan because it's all you're saying it's pecan. It's pecan. Pecan pie. You say pecan. Pecan. Guys, we're going to find out what Google says. Now, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And I don't apologize, okay? I'm not going to apologize for saying it the way I've been brought up to say it. But I am curious, aren't you? Pecan. Oh, my God! OMG! You heard it with your own ears. Did you hear it? Uh-oh. So someone saying that Lester says it wrong might want to go visit Google. Because Google knows everything. Let's hear it again. Speech modification presents... How to pronounce pecan. Oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh. Jamie, can you believe that? There are some that people right now that are that so gonna, mad. That was going to be my question of the day oh, tomorrow. No, Jamie, I messed up your question. I asked already in a video, <laughs> I swear. I have it ready to post tomorrow. So tomorrow, you better still answer. That's all I'm saying is you better pecan still answer. Or pecan. Or pecan. Or pecan. Or pecan, pecan. I don't know. It's For me, it's pecan. But it could be all kinds of ways. Hey, if you, if you want to say pecan, I'm not going to judge. Go on with your pecans. But uh, Google says pecan. I say pecan. And so who cares? But uh, you know what we're talking about. You know what we're talking about, y'all. I'm just excited to have I'm them so in my life. I'm so sorry you didn't know the right way, though. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that y'all are getting it wrong. Have you ever cracked one before and eaten it out of the shelf? Absolutely. I, I don't. I don't that. like all the work. Uh, cracking a pecan is a whole lot like eating a crawfish oh. am i saying that wrong too Crayfish, crawfish. A, a crawfish is a too much work for a little bit of sustenance in my opinion a lot of work but uh, you say that a good pecan should come right out without having to work a whole lot mm -hmm. i've never had a good pecan because the pecans that i eat have to be dug out of there and i don't like I don't all know. that work so so the illinois pecans that i'm used to from my grandparents farm it basically takes a crack and you can pull it you can pull it all the way out and they actually have companies up there where they just do pecan cracking isn't oh. that crazy and then they come back to you and you pick them all out or they will do the same thing if you pay for it but um <clears throat> they're a big deal up north so like for me that's this is like nostalgia heaven and is like opening up all kinds of memories in my life and I'm just excited to, you know, crawl on the dirt and really, really get to know our land. How many of them trees are over there? Because there's more than just that one. So I counted 12 so oh, far, oh, but oh, I have oh, not oh, made oh. it. I have not done anything up front to, on that side to check and, and count any of those. So that's just in the back half. Well, we're, what we're not going to invest in is a tree shaker, y'all. We're not doing the whole tree shaking kind of thing. We will we have, shake a these limb. These are really big trees, though, too. These are <laughs> these are giant trees. These are old. We'll shake a limb if we need to, but we ain't going to tree shake. We're just going to have some fun with the few that we need. And uh, now, do you make pies? You never yeah. made a pie. Do you make the pecan pie? I can make a pecan pie, but I prefer like a like a crumble. I like to make candies with them, but I also just I love to eat them just to eat them. Now, there was something that you used to make for me when we tried that keto diet, and I believe it was crusty crumble it was, it with was, some pecans. So it, I made the pecans into a flour and and made the crust out of pecans butter. OK, salt. and those are delicious and those are pretty healthy, I think, as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was so those, that was those a long will probably ago. come back into our life, too. But it was just a really neat discovery. And to be able to there's a lot of recipes popping up over here. I hope you know the pecans. They are a lot of folks who do some really neat things with them. I, I I'm going to get into it. I promise you. And then I kind of, I kind of thought like maybe, maybe I'd section off a whole other spot for an orchard and we would grow some other nuts. Like, you know, that we can grow cashews and almonds, maybe. Pecans, caramel dipped in chocolate. Woo wee, Jamie, what are we getting ourselves into here? 
We're going to need to walk we, that pasture. We just bought the pasture for the grazing, okay? For the grazing. I had no idea we're going to get into the whole pecan it's business. It's a big deal. No, I do think that Jamie's right, though, on things being seasonal. Because on the side of the road here, what I'm seeing a whole lot of are people selling oranges and people selling pecans. Sometimes the same folks will pull over and have their little side of the road mm -hmm. vendor. And oranges must be... This time of year, is it? Yeah, citrus. Citrus is ripe right okay, now. Okay, so oranges and pecans, <clears throat> pecans. What? What? I, I don't mind how you say it, guys. Uh, please don't care how I say it. You know what I'm talking about. But they must be in season right now, and so we got several of them trees on the property. But uh, no, um, the ponds are full. We got our ryegrass all planted, or you know, the seed was thrown out yesterday. We hope to get some rain tonight, which will help that stuff begin to germinate. Uh, got a lot done on the long, the long stretch of fence. I uh, picked up quite a bit of, of the, the fallen limbs and things in that. I, I don't know what to call that area. It's the tree area, like a courtyard area. Grove. We'll call it the, the grove. grove. The grove. Oh, so in I, the grove, I picked up a whole bunch of fallen limbs and just old things that were, you know, just tossed to the side there and really got that ready. And I can't believe I said it before Lester, but. I kind of can't wait to burn that pile of stuff. Oh, I don't want to burn yet because there's no running yeah, water. Running water yet, we so. have to do all of the water. Now I'm not talking mess about anything, but uh, the, the, this is, I'm not talking mess. I am so darn blessed for the property, but I will say that the water company, there's not a water well. So you have to go get city water. And so city water, the city water department is not really up to date. They're not really up to date. So you can't do things electronically. You can't pay with a credit card. You have to either do a money order, a personal check, or cash. Here's the best part. They're open two hours a day. And they're open two hours a day. <laughs> so we will have to work around Jamie's schedule and get in there and give them our check or our money order. And then I told Jamie, I bet you how much you want to bet that they're probably the same kind of people. And I'm sure they're great folks who they probably send you a bill every month. And you have to open that mail. And then you have to write them a check and send it back in. And so that'll be fine. We'll, we'll, we'll be fine. We, we will care. comply. We will comply. We're absolutely going to comply. <laughs> but it is a little bit weird in a time, uh, an era that we're living in where everything is done just electronically with credit cards over the phone or online. And you don't have that access with your water. But it, it is what it is. We are so happy with this property. And on one side, this is really amazing. On one side, the wooded side of the property all of that is owned by TxDOT, which if you don't know, that's the Texas Department of Transportation. And so they, they're the ones that manage, I guess, run that entire rest stop. And so they own all the property back behind it, which is that means that that side of the property will never be anything other than what it is. No, it'll forever stay wooded. And which is great for us. That means my cows will never have temptations to go over there. <laughs> and so we're so happy about that. The back side of the property, the, well, I'm sorry, let's go across the road. The cross the, in front of the highway where the woods are at is owned by the uh, Alabama Cushada Indian Reservation. And so I can't foresee, now they could always build a casino, but I'm not going to complain about that because if that happens, Guess what happens to the property value of our yeah. land? So the Alabama Cushada Indians own all of the property in front of our property across the highway. Now, there is a guy who has some cows on the side that I'm working on right now. We have not met him, but uh, there's some donkeys, some horses, and some shorthorn cows, which are some really neat cows who live there. And uh, they're just get getting to know me. And they don't like me yet. They don't understand what I'm doing. But I'll tell you what, I did run a strand of wire today that is about five and a half foot high. And they're all like saying, they're all, they're all like doing like, what are you doing up there? I'm like sitting here like working at, you know, head level. And they're all like, what are you doing, weirdo? Oh, they don't know how my cows can jump. They have no idea how my cows can jump. There are so, other, there are, of course, the donkey that you saw in the beginning. Oh, everyone knows his name is Toby. Yeah. Y'all remember that? I'm so happy y'all remember that. Yes, his name is Toby, and he's the bull. And I can already tell you that we're going to have some trouble with Toby, which was the name of my video. <laughs> yes. But there's some horses as well and some donkeys. And I spent some time yesterday trying to get to know them. You'll see that video this week as well. Uh, 
They like Lester. People are saying that city water is expensive. I have no idea. It just depends. I mean, <clears throat> so here's the thing. There are two ponds on top of this. So, and we're not refilling like for pigs, like we did at the sanctuary. Oh no, nothing's going to get it dirty. We'll do once a week refill like we do for the cows. And I would say eventually we'll probably dig a well, but we really like, that's not phase one of this project at all. No. This is this is that there is city water available, and I just have to make it there during that two-hour window that they're open. Oh, by the way, she goes to the post office sometime during that two hours, so she'll be out of the office during that time. <laughs> um, I'm not kidding. And uh, she's like, just wait at the door. Oh, oh okay. Uh, so <laughs> we'll get that done. But then, if you know, then that turns water on for us to be able to get rid of some of the stuff, do some cleanup, uh, be able to hook up the bathroom, like all of those things. Um, what? I lost it. So you know what, believe it or not, I've gotten this a lot. Really? Uh, a, a lot of people are saying that Toby looks like a Spanish fighting bull or a Mexican fighting bull or some kind of a fighting bull. And that might be true. He's not a fighter. But no, he's a sweet little guy. Well, he's not really a little guy. But here's the thing. I've gotten a whole lot of messages with links that I won't open. But some folks are funny. They says, I know you won't open a link, so here's a screenshot. And they will send me a screenshot of exactly what kind of cows they are. So if you want to look up, you know what it was called? It's a short horn. Mm. It's the Texas I, short I, horn. You sent it to me in text, and I that's probably the last okay. text you sent me. Well, I will tell you now, I'm pretty sure I'll read it off to you if you give me a second. I gotta find my text to Jamie. Would you take that comment off of there? Yeah. It wasn't a short horn, it was like a mix of I don't have my glasses. Okay. Here. Okay. So, so they're called Piney Woods cattle. Piney Wood cattle. Which you can to Google me, Piney Wood cattle. Piney Woods is where we're at. So the East Texas is full of Piney Woods, which you would imagine is full of pine trees. That's where it gets its name. Anyway, it's a hardy breed with strong disease and parasite resistance, tolerance to heat, excellent mothering ability, and longevity. They have broad and biodiverse foraging appetite, thriving on variety of forages as at Ozark acres like brambles, greenbrier, kudzu, private grass, and even poison ivy. So essentially, and that, there was one more that you sent me about. That right about um, So they are the mix, okay, of uh, – they were – La, la, la. Spanish colonists established low input extensive cattle ranching systems similar to those in Spanish ranching and the Piney Woods, Florida Cracker, Texas Longhorns and other breeds that were developed in the Americas are called the Criolla cattle. So anyway, I, yeah. but it's a piney wood and it's it's hardy like a longhorn, essentially. And if you look at the pictures that, it, that they sent it, guys, that that is exactly what there is living next door. There's no doubt about it. So I'm not trying to promote my own my own channel but a lot of people are saying that where is this toby and i haven't seen this video and all this kind of stuff guys if you don't know there there is more than just one channel i'm a survivor sanctuary is in fact the main channel but jamie has kind of found her a niche and i have kind of found me a niche and so even though we do post every single day twice a day to i'm a survivor sanctuary we also post to do two other channels, Jamie's channel from Suits to Boots, which is focused mostly on Jamie, her lifestyle, her interest, her hobbies. It's all about Jamie. All Jamie, 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 Jamie. I'm kidding. Plants and horses and all of the things that Jamie is really, really invested in. And then Lester also has his own channel, which is called Longhorn Lester's, which is really all about Lester. Not me, this me, but my interest, you know, with the longhorns, the big birds, the ostriches, you know, things like that. So if you feel like you're missing out on something, you might be, you might be just watching I'm a Survivor only and not knowing there's a whole lot more going on in our lives. And Toby, in fact, is the bull who we met a couple of days ago. He's the neighbors. He's not ours. He's not ours. He's the neighbors, but he's come up and he's going to be trouble. And so I can tell you right now, he's going to find out that uh, no matter how much trouble he wants to start, he's not going to penetrate through my fencing. So he's going to try. You know, it's funny, and I hate to keep rambling so much. That's very unlike me. But I met the fella when he came to get his cows who were on the property. We talked for a while. And he said that, you know, 
he's gotten phone call after phone call from the Polk County Sheriff's Department. They call him at night saying, your cows are out, your cows are out, your cows are out. He lives 45 minutes away. He said he'd get dressed and he'd drive over there and they were never his cows. They were the guy next doors. What's wrong? And so we already know that uh, the cows next door might be trouble, but we are building. I can't wait to show you tomorrow. Uh, we are building us a heck of a fence and uh, it will keep our cows in and keep other cows out. So you don't have to worry about anything about our cows getting out. They're not going to. They are not going to. Fences are secure. They're tight. They're built right. And gates will be locked. And I mean locked, locked. All right. So enough about all of that. What happened? You went over there and just jumped on somebody real fast. It was a uh, old spammer. Link. Oh, spammer, spammer. Okay. Jamie's eye rolls are epic. She does. She can talk with her eyes, y'all. She can say a picture speaks a thousand words and her eyes can speak 10,000 words. Just one look. All right. I will hush up for a minute. Go ahead. People have been asking about Tilly. I know that you made a video. I also made a video. Mine's not posted yet. I don't know if yours did. It, yes, it has. So, so you want to wait? about Tilly's fine. Til Me yeah, Tilly's fine. Medically, medically. Tilly's fine. I We saw the same video some of you all saw. We saw her cough. We also saw a little bit of a look of a pain. Uh, animals can make mm -hmm. a look that looks a little bit pained. And we saw that video. We also see Tilly. We've seen her Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Three days in a row. We spent hours over there. And Tilly's fine, friends. Uh, as a matter of fact, we are pretty sure... Don't, I hate to even say it. I hate to say it too. Like, don't count down the days, but. Do not start a countdown, but, but. Tilly, I think that Tilly's going to have a baby. And so what I think that you saw were labor pains. Or just fat pains. Because let's be honest, she doesn't have a lot of room for extra. But uh, but the thing is. I mean, we, fat from being pregnant, not fat from being fat. I mean, like, she was already a big girl and now she's growing things i know we're not gonna bet you someone says let's have a bet I, we're not gonna bet you we're not we're not that sure don't you know we're wrong about most things like like it's better to for us to bet against what we think in the first place <laughs> yeah. because it's more probable that's that that's true. gonna go down that much is true but uh um ellie and megan are planning on taking her to the vet uh just to check on her follow up but you know this is something that i'll tell you that i talked about in a video I've not posted, but, um, and this was really kind of in just a defense of all animals. And a lot of people are real quick to, when they see like a goat that might be having a, a, an issue, you, you can't just pick up a goat on any day of the week, any hour of the day and run down to the emergency clinic that's open 24 hours. Guys, they don't work on goats. They take dogs and cats only. The emergency vets. Emergency that, vets yeah. only do dogs and cats. And so if your vet is not on call at your vet's office, uh, you you can't just pick up and run to the vet the way a lot of folks assume that you can. And most vet's office don't have on-call hours anymore either. There's, no. a, there's a shortage of it. Like, it, and that's, I mean... Our current like human healthcare struggles with things like that, and then to take it to a vet level where they're one human being or maybe two in a in a practice, and they they just aren't doing that anymore these days. It's not it's just a not a thing, and yeah. the like emergency vets places that they have in Houston and things like that are for dogs and cats. Yeah, unfortunately, you don't have, and so. I think that sometimes you don't understand that the, the urban lifestyle that a lot of folks live is very, very different than the rural lifestyle. And so when you live out in, you know, a not very populated part of town, it, things are not the same. It's not the same as what you might be familiar with. And that was never more evident than when we we're talking about a lot of the dogs in the neighborhood and everyone kept screaming and hollering and demanding that we call animal control. And I, I get it in, in your cities and towns. And I'm hoping 
no matter what country you live in, you do have good animal control that'll come out and help those animals and pick them up, get them off the streets, give them a meal. But unfortunately, in some places, um, we don't have animal control. You don't have that. And so, and I never realized that people didn't realize that. So not everyone spends their tax dollars the same. It's and true. So, and it, it's, it's just a hard, it's a hard battle to fight. And um, we just do our best with, you know, the resources that we have and the connections, you know, we have excellent vets who have been kind enough to give us their cell phone numbers and, and can talk us through things. But even, even some of the big things, like I think back to the night of Dixie, whenever she like, way back almost a year ago now where she had that horrible night out here in the pasture and so many people like call your vet call your vet call your vet they can't do anything if they come out here it would have been a find a way to get her in and we don't live five minutes from the vet and even then and you don't take and drag a 1500 pound horse into a trailer y'all you would put them through that you don't you don't do that so sometimes you got to think things through and see it from other perspectives but you know what we can do is something that every vet and even your 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 pediatric doctors will tell you look at your kids or your pet's demeanor if they're eating if they're still doing the same things they would normally do despite having a cough despite having a you know different things you may see if they have an appetite they're probably going to be okay. They're not in as dire a situation. It's as one of what the first questions they ask. Are they eating? Are they drinking? eating? Are they drinking? And so Tilly, for as pained as we all were by seeing her cough or hearing her cough and then seeing her make a little, a strange stretch. Guys, when it was time to eat, she was the first one in line. She was the first one she in line. She also rammed me that day <laughs> when I tried to look at things. <laughs> Oh yeah. So, so we, we, we have to always do that. We look at the animal's demeanor and their behaviors the same way when we had little kids and kids can't talk, they can't tell well, you. That's what I was just going to say is a lot of times when your kids are sick, you're gauging their demeanor and you're deciding, is it ER worthy? Is it urgent care worthy? Is it doctor worthy? And a lot of us are probably very different in how we view certain things. Uh, I don't think I was ever at the ER as a kid. And until I broke my neck in a car accident and went via ambulance, we just didn't go. You had to be dead to go to the ER because it was going to cost money. Um, and I think that I took some of that from my own mother because Sander never went to the ER or anything like that. Like it, he wasn't a sick kid. So it would just, you know, there were a lot of things that you would have to trust your gut on how they felt and trust your own self to be able to care for some of those things too. And that's how I think it goes with animals. And I will say that I didn't know that until being in it. And I had no idea how much ranchers and farmers actually are so much more capable of the care for those animals because, because they have to be. Does that make sense? Absolutely. No, because you have to be. So you spend time and attention on all of your animals. You try to catch things early if you can. Now, I believe that a lot of people are, are panicked and worried because uh, Jake lost, I think, two goats. My dad lost a goat all within a very short span. And so could there, in fact, be something going around, some kind of a parasite that, that we don't know about that did not get treated when we did our dewormers uh, something we heard about this lung worm and other kinds of things could it absolutely but our goats if they're sick and like badly sick they'll go stand in a corner you all know they'll go stand and put yes. their nose in a corner their tail will come down and they'll and they have no zest for life whatsoever and tilly even though she was coughing and even though she may look a little bit pained she has an absolute zest for life and a lot of fight in her so i understand it's hard it's hard to lose an animal and you want to do your part and make sure that we don't lose any more but as sure as i'm sitting here right now more animals will be lost and we will talk about it when that happens you don't like it but it is a part of farm life when you have 100 plus animals that you're looking after especially when they, you know, a lot of them come from situations where they weren't living their best lives anyway, you know that at some point you're going to lose them all to parasites or predators or accidents or other things. The same way 
you know, it is for us humans. So we give them the best life that we can, and we're never going to neglect one and not allow it access to a vet or vet care if, in fact, it needs it. So, so she'll go to a regular vet visit, and they'll probably do stool samples and check her out to make sure she's okay. But I, I feel like the Tilly we saw yesterday and today was normal Tilly. Yeah. Absolutely normal. So it could have been a fluke. I don't know. Could have been. There's so many things that it could have been. But either way, we'll get it checked out. And yeah. then we'll keep going. Yeah. So I'm going to grab somebody else we're going to talk about. I was just going to say, there are a lot of people asking some questions. All right. Let me get past you right there. Let's just switch seats. You sit in my seat and I'll okay. sit in yours. Sweetie. Hey, can you hear me? Come here. Come here. Y'all been asking about this nonstop oh in every video. Oh. <laughs> My baby. She's so tired, Dad. She's so tired. So I have been calling her Faustoria. Jamie's been calling her Sandy. What else? Reba. Reba. She's not ours to name, y'all. She's not ours to name. We kidnapped her from what we are calling a really bad home, a really bad home life. To, to us, it's kind of like if you were, <laughs> sweetie, come here. Let me ask you what you would do if you were, in fact, noticing that your neighbor's kids kept getting out on the street and walking into other people's homes or their own yards. At some point, you would have to take action, right? You'd have to take action. So we trapped her twice in our traps. We caught her twice in our pastures, not being mean. Not being mean, but just in there. And so finally, on the fourth time that I had to take her, I says to the church kids, I said, hey, tell her owner that I have their dog. If they want her, come and get her. Her name is Shakira. She lives. And I'm like, tell her owners that I have her dog. And if they want her, come and get her. And so I stand by that. This is not my dog. I did not kidnap her. I'm holding her, feeding her. Jamie picked off. How many ticks did you oh pick off of her? God. More than Sadie. So there were more than 40 ticks on her. Guys, she was covered in fleas and ticks. And we treated her with a dewormer and a flea and tick control. And we are fostering her until her owner one day says, you know what? I'm going to go find my dog. I'm going to go, I'm going to drive. All they have to do is drive across the street and say, hey, y'all have our dog. And I'll say, you know what? I have your dog. And she's going to go back to them, flee and tick <laughs> clean. We posted her on that neighbor. So that's a neighborhood. They Hi, have sweetie. a community Facebook page. We posted her picture and um, mm -hmm. nothing. And we're falling in love with her, but everyone does. Everyone loves their foster kids. And the thing is, if you foster one, you end up fostering more. Everyone knows that. They're like tattoos. You foster a dog or a child. Next thing you know, you're fostering 20 dogs and, or children. Is that true? Have you ever known a foster home that only has one? Ever. So we're taking good care of her. Uh, She's very sweet and very easy to love. She's young. She uh, really likes to go on car rides. And has been to the JL Ranch. She She's helped me a lot over there. She loves to ride in the car. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not our option to keep her. We'll keep her until they come and get her. But uh, if they ever show up, then we'll by all means say, here's your dog. She's been fed a lot. She's happy. Oh, she's so she sleepy. And she's so sleepy right now, I know. But uh, she loves me. She, Boy, also, she, loves she me. also loves the rest of the dogs here. And specifically, mm. Christmas is her... Bestest I think friend. Trixie. I, I would you disagree. Do? I'm going to argue and say Trixie oh, is her best of friend. I don't know, but she's sweet. Mm, she smells so good now. now. She didn't smell good before, but she smells so good now, and we love her. But no, I kidnapped her. I'm guilty as charged, and I. But I have no regrets. She she has had a leg injury, like you can see, and I, I made a video about this as well. It's really about. She's had a hip or leg or something that has happened to her. She has yawned over and over. She's and tired. <laughs> you picked her up from sleeping. Baby, you want to go back down? You want to go back down? Mwah. All right. You want to keep talking about it? I'll put her back where she was at. Come on. She, uh, it's just sad to oh, me. Sweetie. I'm going to sneeze. 
You have to talk. Hold on. What happened? I'm going to sneeze. Okay, Jamie's going to sneeze. So I'm going to talk when she says this. <sighs> Thank you. Keep going. She, uh, she fits right in. I'll just say that. She fits right in. I, it's sad to me that for whatever reason, she found herself in the pasture, in the, in the traps, and just not at home so many times, and that nobody's looking for her. Well, it is on video when the last time that I got out of the pasture, I said, okay, this is the end of this. You all are my witnesses. There were 200 people in that church playground, and they were there were some hitting pinatas. There were kids running all around the church, and I picked up that dog, and I said in English and Spanish, tell the owner that I have her dog. If she wants her, she can come right over there and get her. And uh, it's been over a week now, and we've heard nothing. So there is no way that that lady or, or the man, who whoever owns her, uh, does not know at this point where their dog's at, if they want their dog. But um, no. She's here. She's here. We got her. <laughs> She's number eight. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're sickos. Yeah. We're sickos. But we're good sick, though. We're, we're good sick. Whatever that means. Whatever that means. Yep. All right. Do we have anything else? Are we that horrible? Are we really that horrible, y'all? Come on now. Well, let's talk about names. If we if we were to keep her, Sandy Fostoria. I say Fostoria for Foster, but Fostoria. And Jamie said, you probably go Sandy or Reba. Which one? Because you call her both. So I picked Reba first because she had a red tint to her and just Reba. But then I learned that there are a lot of other creators that have a Reba of some sort. So Sandy made sense as well. She kind of looks Sandy. Uh, no, one, now, no now one is I've been singing. Fa Thank you, Kathy. Kathy is the only one that says Fostoria. Now I've been singing Sandra D from Greece every time that I see her. So. Oh, my God. Sandy is winning by a landslide. Fostoria. <laughs> That's just great. Four, four, yeah, I'm home. No. Sandy. That reminds me of John Travolta. What is yeah. it? His girlfriend named Sandy. Sandra D. Oh my goodness. Look at me. I'm Sandra D. She's okay. like, mm, whatever. All right. Well, Sandy, it is. We will, y'all, you have absolutely that's a landslide. That's a landslide. Someone even screams, no, Lester. <laughs> okay, fine. Sandy, it is. I'll go with Sandy. She's okay. Very sweet. No, she's wonderful. She's good with the cats and the dogs. And uh, she's house trained. There's one false story. <laughs> Someone says, please sing, Jamie. You okay. know what I told Jamie? I said, if I had the gift of singing, I would do it in every video. This is my idea for Jamie. This is not my idea for me. I know when I sing, you tune out. So it is what it is. This is funny. If I start singing at the four minute mark, for example, and later, I look at my video, and it says your average view time, four minutes. If I sing at the two-minute mark, average view time, two minutes. When I start singing, people leave. But if I had a great voice where I could, like, touch people with my voice and find a way into your soul using my voice, I would sing every chance I got. I says, Jamie, what you should do is think of a song that goes with the theme of every video you're making. And she goes, that's not my style. I'm like, but you got a great voice. You need to sing it sometimes, Jamie. She I goes, sing not. in I sing in a lot of my videos. I just, whatever's in my head, that tune comes out. But I I don't want to like sit down and play not music me. and sing that theme song. I, I would sing, else. I would sing in every video if I could sing. But I only have one song and I'm not doing Titanic every time I put a video on, Jamie. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna do it. Anywho, I don't have Uncle Dan's angel voice, okay? Sorry. And I certainly don't have her voice. I wish I did. I wish I did have a voice to sing. I wish I could play an instrument. I wish I could sing. I wish I had a way that I could like creep into people's soul and just touch them on the you inside. Do. Have you ever heard a song and got goosebumps? Yes. And it's, it's not the words. It's the way the melody touches you. This makes me think of something. Listen, uh, so everyone knows that Ellie's mom is Spanish, right? She was born in Mexico City, uh, moved here when she was in the third grade, 
And so even though she speaks beautiful English, she also still has, uh, you know, she speaks Spanish as her as her first language. And so she used to have a lot of music. She used to sing Spanish songs. And there was one song. This is crazy. Now, Ellie was just a baby. And I could hold Ellie and put on music to, to, to play while I was holding him. And there was one song that would make him just cry. He would just cry, but not like I can't stand it cry. It was a sad cry. No, 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 no. I'm not making this up. I'll sing it right now. He solo tu fuiste capaz en mi corazón. I think all the words are wrong. I'm saying all the words wrong, but. There's a song. I will find it. And now I got goosebumps. And now I'm going to cry. There's something about that song. And it did something to L.E. as a baby, an infant. And then I begin to realize that, man, I'm kind of feeling the mood, too. That song would bring out the mood, a very sad, sad mood. So he goes, now I'm crying. <laughs> now, y'all, you're being mean. That is the meanest thing that they could say to me, Jamie. Listen, y'all. I'm telling you a story from my past. And uh, anywho, bottom line is, I do think that no matter if you know the language or if you don't, or if you, the things that music can do, besides without even the words, are powerful. Absolutely. So, wow. Now you're making me cry, Lester. <laughs> I'm going to find that song. You have different talents. Like if we're going to talk about that, like, of course, your storytelling is remarkable and can get right in anybody's soul. But the, if you're talking musically, your whistle has this vibrato that is oh, Lord. Remarkable. I did not prompt her to say this. No, but it's true. You have this whistle that is like, like bird song, like, like it is poetic whenever you bird whistle. song. Yes. Like it is like. Like, a, I don't know how to explain it. It just has the most beautiful vibrato and tone to it all the time. And I'll, like, step out from the other room and he'll be whistling. And I'll be like, was that you? Like, it yeah. was just beautiful. Well, thank you. That was sweet of you. Someone says, let's hear it, Lester. I would do it, but I make the dumbest faces. When I whistle, I suck in. I don't blow out. Isn't that weird? I whistle by sucking in. That's got to be a question of the day tomorrow for you. <laughs> Do you suck or blow when you whistle? Do you suck or do you blow when you want to whistle? I'm a blower for the record. <laughs> Brienne can't whistle. Did you know that? I did not know that. Brienne cannot whistle. Uh, when we get ready to end this video, I will whistle the Titanic tune. Not the Titanic. Not the Titanic? Anything How about that? the Andy Griffith show? Okay. But that's not... No, not now. No, okay. Too bye. soon. Too soon. No, you haven't... Like, typically, you'll whistle that song that you were singing. Whistle the, the Spanish song. Can I look away? You can you can stand right over there if you want to. Can I stop now? I'm sorry. Somebody else just said my my ex sucked. My ex sucked. Okay. <laughs> Somebody goes, when he whistled, you met, right? <laughs> and then you're over there, and I'm trying not to laugh because it was. Look, all of the dogs are at my feet now. True. All okay. of the dogs have come to my feet, like, hey, dad, what are we, what are we doing? Where are we going? Are we going bye bye. And I'm like, no, I'm just whistling because mama told me to. <sighs> it's yeah. been an amazing week, guys. We, I want, I'll say it again. I've said it over and over, but we are so very blessed to uh, have you guys along on this journey and can't wait to get our cows over and Jamie and I are talking there may be more animals to go with them because that pasture those pastures are just okay. too beautiful and there's too much green not to take advantage of something and so we're going to do more talking about that but uh I think that probably people can already guess what's going to happen but I'm not going to talk about it. Neither is Jamie, I don't think. But uh, we will be finishing some fence and get some cows moved over in the next week or so. I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Now, Jamie will come to y'all Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving is on Thursday. I will come Friday, but there ain't no one going to be sticking around to watch me live on a on Black Friday. Mm. 
I don't, Black Friday I, ain't what it used to be. It ain't what it used to be. No. If people online Black Friday shop, Friday sales they might. started like two weeks ago. All of a sudden, it came up and like, oh. and how many TVs do people need? Because that's anyway. Yeah. Okay. Well, we love you guys so much. I know that we say that a lot, but we. I don't think you can ever say you love someone too much. I, I really don't think you can say it too much, but um, we love you guys. We don't know what we would do without you. Do I sound like I'm like trying to talk an ex-girlfriend back into my life or something? I love you. I don't know what I'll do without you. You can't. <laughs> no, go ahead and finish it up, babe. All I want to say is, is thank you so much for being a part of this wild and crazy journey with us. And, for all of the unexpected and the things that are planned to, we're just so grateful that you're here with us to experience it and uh, that you put up with us. Absolutely. All right. Well, with that being said, we're going to jump right back to where we first started. Uh, for <laughs> where's, where's the beginning? Where's the beginning? Here we go. Time alone. I think I've been spending too much time alone here at the JL Ranch. Now I got a supervisor. Folks, Lester here. Morning, folks. Lester here. Folks, Lester here. Hey, folks. Lester and Jamie here. Good morning, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hold on. Oh, is my face as dirty as yours? Is my face as dirty as yours now? Hey, yeah, you got a dirty. Morning, folks. Lester here today. Are you excited? I'm nervous. So look who has shown up to help me today. He didn't know he's helping me. He thinks he's just come to look at the place. He and Wendy, his wife, have come by. And I'm like, oh, he doesn't even know what's about to happen. He doesn't even know what is about to happen. Looky here in the back of my truck. That would be 100 T-posts. 100 T-posts that have to be set in the ground. Come on, girls. Come on, let's go. Come on. All right, so. <laughs> Is that something else? How much noise comes out of the little bodies? 